right in the surface. Um, so we have a little nice sphere here to spin with. Okay. We already did the inputs to the main panel, which is what we use to see what's on here. But to get there, we have all of these options to just drag and drop put in here. However, let's just go through a few of them for now, otherwise it might burst your brain. So, let's start for instance, color. Now notice, let's break this down. Notice up here, this property label. Uh, I say that's up here. This is what you will see, this name will, is what you'll see on the side here. Usually. Um, that's when you're edit that's when you're editing the uh, t the colors on the in the actual editor rather than the shared shared forge. That's like if you want to quickly edit it and not have to recompile it, which is nice. Um, so let's see what we can call it. Color diffuse. I call it color like that because I'm Australian. Yes. So let's go RGB. Compile shader. And now it should be gray. Bring it in here. Yeah, it's already red for some reason, so I tweaked it before. But you see, it's um, and change the color in here very easily. All right. Now let's um, let's see about what these do. Okay, we can also edit it in here. Just change these values. They're not quite like red, green, green, blue, but you can actually edit that right here. When you click on this down here, click on that, and choose your color. See how these change? You can also change these yourself. He also put over a no number one apparently, so that's good. Think he might have crashed it. No, I didn't. No, okay, that's, that's good. Yep, that was a very heavy color. <laughs> wow. That, that, that was good of me. Yeah. A very strong red. Yeah, you can put over over one of them just to overblow it if you need be, I think. But as it seems to say here. Yep, you can overblow it. <laughs> color. That's good to know. Okay, um, so the next thing, next thing along is, uh, let's see what happens when you subtract, let's do some subtraction. Like, you know, just, some people might think, oh, this is boring maths. This is what's going to make making these shaders, and I personally find it, I, I used to find maths very boring in, in at school. Then I found out about this. That you can do it, I mean, this is for shaders, and it just became so cool. Uh, let's see, um, let's do, subtract the red with the gray. So you kind of does that. That's, I know it's going to be boring, just, just bear with me. Um, subtracting color. Yeah, that, that should do. Yes. Okay, um, compile again. Now you see it's really just, you can just edit them real time once again. That's blue because we subtracted it. Now it's just a weird color. Yeah, that made sense. Yeah, in one way or another. Yep. Okay. So that's uh, subtraction. Simple enough. If you want to think, layer things above each other, which is pretty nice. Um, you, can, you can do an add. I'm gonna do a little something, something a little bit advanced. A little bit. No, nothing great. Let's get a Fresnel. Okay, this is a geometry data down here. So you can get some of the data from the geometry itself and use that in the shader, which just makes it even, even better. Okay, so let's get the for now going. Um, the normal and the exponent. We can actually get the normal direction of this object. Like dragging from that here. Nothing much more you have to do. Go normal. Go the exponent. I'd say you just get a, a single va value. That should do. These snap together. I love it. Let's get these together. Um, let's say about two. I'm just making mock guess. Um, that should. And now let's see if we can actually get a multiply node in here instead. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this like this sphere sphere like um outline to our object and to our yeah, whatever object it might be. So we can Fresnel it. And let's say we can color that with the same same color node we have here. Color that red. And that should be fun. Um, let's multiply this. Uh, let's add add the Fresnel over the 
darker red we have. This should be fun. Diffuse. And hopefully we have something that overlays itself. Yes, we actually do. You see how it's going around the edges there? Try it around here. Yep, there's a slight brim to this. You can also change that exponent in here. With a, we, Let's get rid of this constant value. Constant values cannot be changed, just like if you want to make something that you don't want the actual user to be changing if, in case it breaks something. Exponent Fresnel. Fresnel. Screw it. Um, let's get that exponent in here. Five. And we can change that while in, uh, in the actual editor. This might make it a little more crisp. But very much closer in. Yep, and you can also sub make it. Yep, you can make it <laughs> inverted so you have some weird thing happening there. Yes, um, that works, I think. Yeah, okay. Um, it says red on basically another red, so that's that's rather nice. Uh, see, we've got a lot. The Fresnel basically adds like that outline to the actual geometry. So, that works. It's, good, it's very nice for, like, glowing effects or, say, just one a simple lighting effect. That could do very well. So that's, um, that's for nails and, um, layering. Which works pretty well, I'd say. Okay, um, next thing along, let's get our panner node. It's down here at, uh, where was it again? UV operations. So you need the UV map, uh, the UV map that's going along. Uh, now let's get that that person's texture uh, that we have there. Um, texture 2D. We'll need both of these, by the way. Texture 2D to in, to gather that texture data, but we need um, that inputs. We also need a texture asset, which is what the texture comes in as. Texture asset. And this one here. Texture input. Let's do that. Oh, wait. Yeah, we probably can just do it right in here, but whatever. You know, we can choose to be a normal map. That's. I like this already. Um, the panner. Let's see what we can do here. Okay, panner. Pan this UV map. Uh, let's probably get this in here then. UV map and basically this. Okay, we probably want to just go left to right. Keep an, keep an eye about the panner here. Um, this is this is like the U is left to right, V is up and down. So as you put it one, it'll be going constantly going. I think it's going to the right. I don't remember it entirely, but we're about to see. Let's get us up here. No, no, you notice I probably haven't inputted texture yet. We can do that in the actual um, Unity editor if that's if need be. So that's what I'm doing right now. Yes, let's do that. You, you see what's doing now? Yeah, let's play it. So it's a bit smoother. <laughs> Creepy as all hell, but there you go. That's it's uh, literally panning along. Fun, isn't it? Also got it. Yeah, that's that works, right? Yes, it does. Oh my God. <laughs> um, so that's a panner, we can also get a rotate node. And other things like that, like right air, we can get parallax, there's so much we can do with this. It's in, it's, it's lovely. <laughs> yes. I did just say that. Okay, um it was a rotator node, it's see it's a bit more complicated, a little bit more complicated I'm gonna say. Uh let's rotate the UV, but at the same time I'm gonna just make it pan through it. Okay. So we need the the pivot isn't as necessary I'd say, but we can use that. It's like where it rotates around the object. So we can, have, we can have, I think we can do that. Get a vector two, which is which would be like the x and y values of where it's going to be. Okay, that's a nice thing to do. Um, if you like left click and drag, it'll highlight the ones it can go into and keep the ones that you can't go into just grey. So that's to avoid like, any conflicts with your with your object. Um, vector 2, let's see, let's start with uh, 0 0.8, it's like the point where it's going to rotate around, so 
just going to go ahead and go zero point eight. Yeah, there you go. I don't where that is, but we'll see where, where that goes. Pivot. Let's do that. Uh, oh, yeah, I think we found it. It's found it somewhere down there. Uh, let's rotate a bit, I think. Yeah, whatever. Now let's get the angle. So we need a vector 3 for that, don't we? Yes, we do. Nope, I'm wrong. Now we need, also need the uh, speed. Get that here, too. Actually, let's get a... Let's not get a constant that time. Uh, sorry, one second. Here. Let's get a constant value just, just for now. So get it, get this, get the speed in there. Like, what direction would it rotate? Just all class, I guess. Um, <laughs> zero point eight. I like the eight number, don't I? That number, you know. And the angle, uh, I guess, goes in there. And you are. And let's try this now. So basically, we got some interactivity with it so far. Yeah, so mix and match and just go berserk. That's what I'm going to say. That's how I learned it, at least. That, that's fun. I choose you. Actually, let's change the angular up a bit. I think it's rotating. <laughs> I actually can't tell yet, but it appears to be doing something. It's on a slight angle. Well, I guess that's how, how I permanently make it rotate to a si size. Inside. So that, that's nice. I think. Anyway, that's, um... That's how, let's see, leave it there for the, uh... Basically just the pixel-based shaders. Um, just these things here. Next thing I'll go into is actually just vertex shaders, which gets pretty insane. You can make some nice holograms, you can just... You can make things prettier. Yes, I did just say that. Okay, let's um, end this here, and I'll continue next time on vertexes.